welcome. Our guest is one of the people who makes community TV possible. He's also a performer, musician, teacher, producer, writer, director and editor of video. He's also the production and operation manager at Channel 44 here in Adelaide. Is there anything I've left out, Albert Germain? Um Well, I have goats. I do. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I have, a th I have a bit of property, so... You know, it's easier to keep the keep the grass down if I have a few goats. If you on have that. a few goats, yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, and yeah. you also run. Yes, yeah, so I've gotten into running a couple of years ago. So um, you know, um, yeah. What did, what did you just win? Oh, I actually just won a, <laughs> I just won a silver medal at the national champs a couple of weeks ago in Sydney for sprinting. You know, so um, yeah. Who would have thought? Yeah, just thought I'd take up something different. <laughs> How amazing! I love that. <laughs> but um, but Malcolm. I've just got to hold you up a minute. We're not actually here to talk about me. Oh, yeah, no, we are. You're the well, guest. Well, yeah, I know. I know, I know that, that's the usual uh, routine you go well, with. Well, it is. I know. But, but just for a change, you see, of course, this is your 500th episode, hosting oh, our time. Well, it actually is, yes. Yeah, that's right. right. I'm glad you just suddenly remembered. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought maybe we'd just turn the tables a bit and uh, ask you a few questions. I mean, you have... You've inter uh, you know interviewed a lot of interesting guests over the years. I I'm have, sure you actually, have. Yes. So um, how about we find out? Do you know? Out? I reckon. Mm. Speaking of that, uh, probably we've interviewed about seventeen hundred people. Only seventeen. Only seventeen hundred. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So In thirteen years. It's, yeah, it's actually yeah. quite extraordinary. Yeah. But, but what a lovely education oh, for me. That was amazing. You know, so I've learnt so much stuff. Before we ask a bit about it, you, why don't you tell us how you got. How, be, how you became the host of our time. Oh, okay. Well, I wasn't the original host. Mm -hmm. uh, Robin Reinfeldt was the original host yep. um, with Debbie Beebe. And Debbie, after a couple of episodes, felt this wasn't right for her. And her sister-in-law, Janice Beebe, took over. And after 39 episodes, after 38 episodes, Robin Reinfeldt, who was the original host, mm. uh, decided to move on to other things. And I was asked, would I come in to do an interview to talk about myself? Well, talk about myself as if I could. <laughs> um, well, um, I did. And yeah. in the program, Janice asked me, would I be interested in um, taking over hosting? Mm. And then sadly, this was in 2011, I think. And then um, I think it was 2014. Unfortunately, our producer director passed away. Mm. And in order to continue the program, it was either, well, step up and take over producing. And a couple of other girls came in to help during that first period of time. But I think I've been producing the program now for about eight or nine years, I guess. Mm. Who mm. would have thought? Fantastic. And Just, here you are. <laughs> and Yes. Here I am, 23 and still doing it. There you go. There you go. Well... Perhaps what we should we should start doing now. I've gotten together with your editor Blake. Oh, yes, now. yes. We've been sort of a you know squirrelling away in the archives and trying to find a few clips to have a little look at. Okay. So um, we've got a couple of clips from uh, some older our time episodes. So okay. uh, why don't we take a look? Okay. Right. I'm looking. <laughs> oh well, I know what that is. That's our five hundredth show. Yes, I remember that very well. It was a really nice cake this too. It was. Crew, this like, is. Oh, I know. This is a Christmas. Uh, oh, that was a, that was the crew we used to have on the program. Our crew keeps changing, of course, mm -hmm. because we're manned by students from UniSA. Yeah. Oh, and that was our old opening. So, Flavella, this is your well. Okay. <laughs> oh, how can I forget this? Are you the Actually, I'm not afraid of snakes, but it was um, yes. lucky. Yeah, well, it was pretty unusual to have a snake wrapped around. Who, who, who am I holding here? I think it was called Diamond. Holding a diamond. Did it squeeze you? Diamond's lovely. No, but. Um, Oh, I mean, oh, I one get in your pocket. Oh, no, up my sleeve, I think. Oh, hello. Stroke it. Oh, hello. <laughs> yes, it was oh, heading no, up my sleeve. Get out of the sleeve. How they, dare they, you? They like the dance. You've got to be invited. Yes, I thought And that's that. Flavella. Fla um, she dances with snakes. That's what she does. Yeah. Um, gee, there's been a lot of very funny things happen on the program. And welcome back to our... Oh, and this was... Um, couldn't come to us. This is my dear friend, Phil Skinner, oh, I remember who, Phil. who really inspired me Hello. when I was four years old to get into show business. Mm -hmm. And she was in a nursing home by this time. Uh, and she was both a mentor and a friend and a show business mother to many. And you worked with her. I did. I was very impressed with the fact that she could still do the splits 
Yes. In her 70s or something. Yes. <laughs> well, actually, she could do it right up until oh. she was in her 90s. She used to yeah. play the banjo. She'd hold her leg up here and play the banjo or pretend to play the banjo. <laughs> She's incredible. Yeah. Pretty fantastic. amazing. Yeah. So um, now you said about the snakes, lucky nothing went wrong there. Is there anything that did go a little bit haywire? Any story? I'm sure you've got lots of stories. Uh, no, actually, strangely enough, hmm. no is the answer. Um, we, we make the program obviously regularly because it's on every yeah. week, but um, everything's sort of just plotted along and it's, it's great because the students out here, um, they're learning to make TV mm. and um, the, the guests that come on the program are all of great interest, genuinely. Mm. Some are really funny, some subjects are quite serious, mm. but um, it, it all sort of just flows. There's... Mm. We were saying at one stage we should, um, and I don't think we have, made a funny mm. tape of all the mistakes because sometimes, you know, you say the wrong thing and we don't put that bit to air. Mm. But um, the show that we make is pretty much what you see on air is pretty much what happens here. Mm. There's very little other stuff that happens. Yeah, but I think that's testament to how good you are at holding a conversation with someone or getting the best out of someone or your interest in their their world. I think that's that plays into well, it, a bit, I, wouldn't you say? Well, that's true. Um, re I'm genuinely interested. That's why, mm. Mm. Um, and so much I've learned. Honestly, mm. so much. And it comes I've across learned. that way. Well, it really does. It's yeah. great, and I think. I mean, that's one of the things that often TV programs lose mm. because they've got a script in front of them. I've never had a script. Yeah. Um, I know who the people are. I've done the research before I talk to them. But a trick I learnt from Ernie Sigley was don't talk to people beforehand. Only talk to them when, once you're actually on air because if, you, if they've answered a question mm. or if you've told them what you're going to ask, what they tend to think, I've already said that, mm. And they don't yeah. give you the answer you're looking for. Yeah. Well, Malcolm, that's just a start. We've got plenty more to go. Really? Yeah, we do. And uh, Blake and I have been stalking you on Facebook because there are oh. plenty. There's a lot of clips on there. So uh, can you explain? During COVID, yes. During <laughs> COVID, I went a bit mental. You did. So, oh. Uh, so, oh, okay. So this is my first costume. I was three years old then. My mum made it and I sang at, at a church social little Mr. Bagby pictures and my cousin Trevor and I, Trevor's on the left mm -hmm. and I've got the haircut that wow. has suddenly become popular again. That was singing churchy songs. This was at the Wonderland. I was 16, my first professional work. I'd, I hadn't left school yet when I first started singing there. And then after and that... this I, group? <laughs> yeah, I worked with a band called the Bow Jests. That, that was some fun times with those guys. Oh, bit of modelling? Yeah, where'd you find? Oh, well, <laughs> yes, I was working at Myers during the daytime and they got me to do... And who's marked down Mike? Yeah, well, there you go. And look, <laughs> held up for $45. Actually taught the people on the floor how to count in dollars and cents because we'd just come out of pound shillings and pence uh -huh. that year. Oh, this is with the Bunyip Children's Theatre. I'm the second from the right. I played Ping Pong and Pang, three identical triplets. Oh, this was at the Old King's Music Hall. Um, I'm uh, on the right side, second ma man in, believe it or not. Well, there's I love footage doing... of that later too, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love doing these numbers with the girls. I think I was doing Song and Dance Man or something. Oh, I was in Annie Get Your Gun. So it's was Wendy I. Wendy Patching. Mm. Oh, that Wendy? Yeah. yeah. And we played the juvenile leads in that with uh, Tony Lamond. That was the old King's musical, playing a hero. Big, big with the heroes. <laughs> and also, I worked a lot with Janice during that time. This is Cheryl Mills. Uh, and this was Dick Whittington. Oh, it was Dick. Another one. Yeah. Molly Sugden. I was, Molly. I was lucky enough to work with her and interview her. She was just such a wonderful woman. We remember her from Are You Being Served? Yeah, oh, she was a Oh, favorite. and this, this is a very grainy shot, wherever you found this, but I'm in the front playing Aladdin, playing the role that Phil Skinner played when I first saw her, yep. uh, when I first saw Pantomime, and that's what inspired my whole career. And I actually played the same role that she played because principal boys were played in those days by women. 
That was great, Malcolm. But just sit tight. We're going to hear some congratulation messages for your 500th episode. Hello, I'm Teresa Di Gennaro. And today I'd like to congratulate Malcolm Haslett on hosting 500 episodes of Our Time. Hey, I'm Dan Sherwood from Pathways Music School and I want to wish Malcolm a huge congratulations for his 500th show. Hello, I'm Frances Bedford. I'm very lucky to know Malcolm Haslett and have been able to watch his career from almost childhood to adulthood. He's been fantastic for South Australia and the arts. Well done on 500 episodes of Our Time and many, many more. Now, Malcolm, um, we've also come across a few photos and I believe it's from the days you were hosting Saturday Morning Show. Is that correct? Oh, on Channel 10. On Channel 10, yeah. Yeah, that's a bit of a funny story. I was working at the Old King's Music Hall at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Channel 10 wanted to do an innovative show. This was my fan shot. It was my first Mm -hmm. morning on television doing riddles with the kids in the audience. But the show was like a melodrama set in a castle. Obviously, that's me on the left. In the middle was Rita Street, a local actor who played a witch, and Veronica Overton, who was sort of the hostess in those days. And this is a program that we made there some years later called You Don't Say. Um, well, let's listen. That's, an, <laughs> that's it's funny seeing this again. OK, Malcolm. It's, it's, it's a gang sign. sign. Right. Right? Is it on something? Uh, no, no, do, don't, don't, did, did. did. Don't. As a group, we worked for hours don't learning all these drink. signals. Don't drink, think, don't drink. Think. And you still have that vest, right? <laughs> I do. <Don't> <laughs> of course you do. I actually made it myself. Don't drink. Don't drink what? Pour dirty don't water. Sink. Um, um, oh, oh froth. Oh, oh, don't brew uh, beer. Proper name of uh, um, this home brew. No. No, it's a proper name of, of detergent. Oh, don't drink. Is it? Is it? Don't it's drink washing powder. powder. Don't drink washing. Omo. Drive. Don't. don't uh, drive. Oh, oh, Got to get those stains off. <laughs> Don't drink drive. Dash. Dash. It's it. It it's it's a washing powder. I know. I know. How is your stain? Oh, I got them out. Oh, very good. Listen, it was a gag sign. It should have been yours, Brendan. Don't drink drive. Don't drink drive. It's a washing powder. Rude. Oh. And a good one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, good it's funny saying that again, Albert, because <laughs> the, those shots at the beginning, when I first started, I think I was about 21, mm-hmm. and uh, the idea of the show was that it was sort of a melodrama set in a castle. And Veronica and I lived upstairs, and the witch lived downstairs, and all she wanted to do was get rid of us. So we'd go to the studio at six o'clock in the morning, work out what we were going to do for two hours, live to air, then do it (laughs) with a live audience and with me doing uh, riddles with the audience. So so no pre-production or anything? No rehearsal, no No pre-production. Just, you're on, just do it. Great, great teacher for TV. Yeah, fantastic. Speaking of TV, Mm. um, there was an iconic uh, character that you once worked with. Oh, Humphrey. Good old Humphrey, that you actually got me on working with yes, at some point. Did. That you was uh, because of you that I got to work with Humphrey. Yes, um, that's right. Oh, I'd forgotten but, that. Yes, but again, we're not talking about me. We're talking about you. Let's so. <laughs> talk about you. No, 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 no. It's too easy for you to do that. So, um, yeah, tell us a bit about Humphrey. I think we got some... Well, um, I didn't start actually on the program. I started mm. in a live show, ah, um, yeah. which, was pl- which was written called I Love You, Humphrey, Be Bear, and it mm-hmm. started here... Adelaide, and you've got this clip. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this was this is the earliest footage I've got of myself actually uh, making up. I played four different characters, and I think I was making up to be a, a Jack in the Box in this particular mm. clip. Uh, it was used on the Humphrey program because of obviously Humphrey Bear was mm. uh, in the show, mm. and it was at the theatre here in Adelaide, the Royalty Theatre. Um, Oh, oh heavy, I'm so it. pleased that you've used that because that's... Oh, we had fun finding some that's of these. Re- yeah, because <laughs> that is the first vision I think I've yeah. got of uh, me doing anything. Yeah. Because obviously I've been performing before this, yeah. but um, yeah. yeah, this was it. Did you enjoy but putting makeup on? Because I found it a chore at times. The problem with this show is, yeah. was that we had to change makeup mm. four times during a show. 
We did two a day. The show then went uh, out of Adelaide. It was it was a sellout here in Adelaide. We went to Perth. It was a sellout in Perth. Mm. And then we went and played in Her Majesty's in Melbourne in the daytime while No No Nanette was playing at night. Um, and I did all the sets for it. It was one of the major sort of mm. set painting jobs I had. Mm. And actually, this was the show in Melbourne. Um, Oh, there's Humphrey. Oh, I'm the clown there, by You're the, the clown, way. yeah. Yes, another character. Ah. This was a character I played and I actually got banned from television called Sydney Sly. Oh. And Sydney Sly rubbed out too fearsome for children. Mm. Goodness, where did you find that? Well, <laughs> we did a bit of digging, like I said. <laughs> well, TV changed uh, quite a lot in children's mm. television because the commercial aspect was basically thrown out. But... Um, it was difficult to find oh, characters socks and things to, to play. Oh, this is actually socks. from Here's Humphrey. Uh, I, I, started his, I started working on Here's Humphrey, uh, really the TV program. Yeah. Think um, really very about uh, 1973 <laughs> or two, Humphrey. maybe 72. Um, and I was sort of, uh, uh, people used to say, are you Humphrey's father? <laughs> Gee, really I've aged tonight. a bit since then. Yeah. <laughs> I think I remember that set. Uh, yeah, I was probably, in, oh, I don't know how old I was then. But oh, that mm. was one of the nicest times. It's a real shame that, that uh, unlike the ABC, that the presenters mm. and the Humphrey show was not? never, is not, not sort of talked about now like Play School is. Mm. Because Humphrey and Play School were the two main programs on mm. commercial television at the time. And... I think we had a huge influence on Australian kids at the time. There was definitely a change in the way people looked at kids' television. Mm. No, definitely. I remember when I was working on it, we were competing against yeah. High Five and the right. whole landscape changed and we yes, actually had yes. uh, Glennis as the live pianist. And right. I, that time when they stopped the live music and went to pre-recorded because of commercialism. So, um, it, But it does lose that sense of that there's something about when you do that live yes, performance. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, this is... Oh, I remember this. Oh. This is hysterical. <laughs> we should just watch this because okay, this is just Humphrey being Humphrey Bear. Yeah. Humphrey, the fire's doing really... Uh, what happened? Humphrey, where are you? Wasn't Humphrey here before? Uh... <coughs> Humphrey, what are you doing down here, Humphrey? Uh, uh, oh, oh, you're picking up a spoon. Uh, could I just help you up, Humphrey? Um, just, um, <coughs> have you, were you here a minute ago? Uh, I just wondered how all this flour got everywhere. Uh, wouldn't have been you by any chance, would it have? Yes. <coughs> You, yes, you. On a neighborhood. So why didn't you ask me? Oh, and we, we did the weirdest things on the program. Um, you got some moves there. <laughs> well, we certainly had to do a lot of that, yes. Improvised, um, I take it. Uh, yes, <laughs> yep. Do it right. Do it right. Uh -huh. Tom Fairley was the bear. Oh, I was wondering if it was Tom. Yeah. I mean, the fact, I think my most memorable thing is that he's perpetually four. Yes. And I think that was the beauty of... Absolutely. Of, yeah. The good, yeah. oh, okay, there's another one. The good thing oh. about Humphrey Show was we got to play lots of different characters on the yeah. program. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually remember this because all those people in the foreground are people from the office. So when we needed extras, of course. suddenly there were extras. Oh, goodness. 
Oh, oh this is in the early days of Chroma Key. I was where, say, um, video effects. <laughs> where Humphrey and Judy were in another oh, part of the studio. Oh, no. And uh, I was obviously on the set, but Hello. being a, a giant. And it used to take us forever to shoot these things yeah. because in those days, the chroma key was the only way you could, you know, change the size of people or put them in a background that they weren't actually standing in. You'd be in front of a green screen. Yeah. In fact, then it wasn't a green screen, it was a blue screen. It's become a green screen now, but it was a blue screen then. Have you? Oh, yes, we have. Have yes. you really? Yes. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Nobody ever comes to visit me. I'm glad you <laughs> enjoyed those Humphrey clips. I, well, I, <laughs> I haven't seen that forever. Yeah, it's, yeah. I know I've posted those some of these on Facebook. Is that yeah. where you found them? Yeah, yeah. Look, look. Well, it's not hard to find some of these. No, things. Well, it takes I, a bit of, like I said, yeah, it takes a bit of a time. digging. Yes, and time, definitely time. Um, I know one of my. Oh, mem- sorry, that was. Uh, I think I said that was Tom Fairley, in the, in Humphrey. Yes, and he was just wonderful to work with. Yeah. Um, mm. A true professional dancer, but with a wicked sense of theatrical humour, yeah. which is also mine. So we had a lovely time making the programs. And you could see that. And I think that that, that certainly resonates for any of the children that you would have been uh, Yes. Do you know, I, I reckon I made more than 500 episodes of Humphrey too, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah, but it probably just went like that, I imagine. It did, yeah, yeah. before I left and you guys took it. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember mm. having just as much fun. I don't know if I had good dance moves like those, but... <laughs> <laughs> All improvised, yes. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, the other thing that... Um, I loved going to Channel 9, you know, and there's so many iconic shows. Hollywood and, and Adelaide. The, Hollywood and Adelaide. Yeah. So, come on, got to tell us a bit more about Channel 9. Well, one of the mm. good things about being at 9 was um, you were involved in everything. You know, you did mm. the Tonight shows... If some interstate person didn't turn up because they used to fly and do the show and then fly out the next morning, if there was a plane strike, and there were in those days, quite mm. often they'd come to me and say, can you do a song on tonight's show or can you be in a sketch or can mm. you do whatever? So it was a great, uh, you know, it was a great, um, I suppose, learning experience. Oh, well, is it? oh OK. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's yeah. Yeah, that's when go. I first auditioned, actually, to to work on Channel 9 and I didn't get called. Oh. <laughs> that was 1966. My mother kept that. There you go. That's what mothers are for. That, that was at an audition. <laughs> oh, yeah. But eventually I did make it, uh, obviously, well, working we there. found the footage. Uh, yes. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it, this is that great. was Ernie Sigley from Adelaide Tonight. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I'm singing um, Just The Way You Are. The Billy Joel song, I think it was. So a bit bumpy. Oh, because these were recorded on pneumatic tape, which was a big three quarter inch tape, mm. and we all bought pneumatic machines. And um, I recorded this obviously on air, off air. It was the first time we could record and watch ourselves back to see what we were doing, oh. which is now commonplace. Yeah. But. Um, <laughs> they actually and you made still went with that sh- with that jacket? <laughs> uh, I've it. <laughs> still got that too, actually. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Just use that in another show. Oh. Um, but it, songs like this were very popular at the time, and they, you know, there were no clips in those days. Mm. Oh, what's this one? Oh goodness, I know what this is. It's I write the songs. I'm just talking about the pneumatic tapes. That's why there's that line at the bottom because they wore out after. Um, you know, several uses. Mm, mm. And I'm, guess, I'm guessing you replayed it lots and lots of times. Is that why we're seeing the line? Um, <laughs> no, I think the tapes just started to disintegrate after time. Fortunately, I dubbed all this stuff over a long time ago uh, as soon as we could mm. put it onto fire, which is how it ended up on Facebook. Never thought of growing that mo back? No. <laughs> I grew the moustache because at the time I was working uh, in a theatre restaurant as well, uh, playing a much older person. I, thought I needed to look older so I grew a moustache. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Were we ever that young, Albert? Uh, and he does seem like yesterday. Oh, wow. Oh, and the good thing about being at nine, again, we were used for all sorts of things. So uh, 
did an uh, interview oh, with John Farnham, John, yeah. the painting behind I'd painted, and that's where he met his first manager, and that yeah. macrame thing I'd Joanna made sitting in the audience seats. Oh, goodness. Oh. Telethons oh, were really popular. Yeah, I was going to ask you about this one. Yeah. yeah. They have donated respect to that was Daryl. Um, he was the singer of Zoot, I think, very one very of those bands. A lovely bloke. Uh, sadly, no longer with us. That's when you start to realise you're getting old. <laughs> yeah, indeed. But telethons were such a big thing in early television. I loved watching them. Yeah, well, they were great to be part of because there would be. In, oh. There'd be insane stuff that would happen. And you always tell it was mostly improvised because... It was all improvised. All improvised, yep. there you go. Floor managers running around wondering what on earth <laughs> to get you to do next that was silly. We well, always wanted to see the figure go up. You always wanted to watch the money. You know, that's yes, the, exciting. exciting. I have no idea what was happening. Whew. Well, we're cranking through a lot of uh, nostalgia tonight, but let's have a listen to some more messages. 500 shows. This man needs a medal. My congratulations to Malcolm for hosting our time for 500 episodes. May there be 500 more. Malcolm, it's Ben here from The 64. Congratulations on 500 episodes. That's 13 years, which is half of my life. I would have been 10 when you started this. So congratulations. What an innings. I'm Paramita Roy. And I'm Helen Capasso. The mum's behind the mask. And what a milestone. 500 shows, Malcolm. Bravo. I'm Andy Beecroft, the Marketplace Manager for Adelaide Fringes International Arts Marketplace Honeypot. Congratulations to Malcolm for his 500th episode of Our Time. Yeah, so you look like you had a lot of fun at Channel 9. Oh, look, it was like a boyhood dream come true. You know, I, when television first started, I just thought that's where I want to be. Mm. Um, and I was so lucky to be involved, not from the very beginning, but I started singing on the Channel Niners when I was 14 uh, and that was sort of a regular gig every couple of months. I'd, I wisely sang songs that were appropriate for a kids show, never realising at the time I was, mm. with Barry Hall playing the piano oh, yeah. or organ yeah. and I used to be so nervous going down to do it but the mm. euphoria after doing it, in those days cameras used to come literally this close to your face because mm. there were no zoom lenses, yeah. there were three lenses that used to spin around. Mm. Um, yeah, so it, j just being there was great, but then actually working there mm. and being on daily television. Mm. Um, and when, when I started producing there, it was the same. You know, I was there mm. doing like you, an office job, yeah. but we had to put out a program at four o'clock every day. Yeah. And of course, not only um, we can obviously see you're multi-talented, as you have to be in, that, in this industry, singing, dancing, acting, clowning, whatever it is, but you can also do some craft. And we've got some footage of uh, Adelaide Today Show. So oh, let's really? roll this and you can tell us about oh, what okay. you were doing here. Okay. <laughs> um, do you remember this one? <laughs> oh, that's the lovely Jan. She was on, the show re on this show recently. Yeah, great. I used to be a barrel boy occasionally too whenever I was on. I used to do some live ads as well. So what are you doing with these gum nuts? Well, I'll explain, I think. <laughs> or a bowl or something, or something like this, which is an old cup with the handles knocked off. See, that's where the handles were. Um, but they never know what to do with, so I'm going to show you today the rest of this plate. So we've painted it over with brown paint. Yes. Look at the top here. And... and all that the idea of this is, once the paint is dry, you use a little bit of this stuff and literally just wipe it on like this. Yeah? Over the, over the what over colour that. paint? And you see what it's doing, over the brown paint, see what it's doing? It's buffing up and bringing out the highlight. And making it gold. Now, honestly, anyone can do this. It is so easy. You could do this, Jan. Any of the boys on the floor here could do this because you can see how easy it is. Now, I, I want to show that because that's a mistake. But look. And I'll explain to you why. But that's how simple this sort of toning is to do. Now, this one was the first one I made. You see, I actually do prepare these segments. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. Believe it or not. Um, and when I put varnish on it, it went all the underneath paint went all wrinkly and a bit vile. But then when I stood back and looked at it, I thought, that actually, just turn it around. Just rotate for rotate. a second. And you'll see that one side is a bit more. See, it's got that very oldy, oldy look exactly. about it. So that's a rather interesting thing. And so just that's, have what, a look of course, what you were doing with this. Yeah, doing the same that's thing exactly that. the beginning of it. Now, this one here is exactly the same principle. You've got a snail in it. I have, and it's a real one. So and you've glued him. 
to well, the inside of the pot. Well, it's not really real. I just made up a little plaster base for the snail. I was trying to show it to you. It's a real snail shell that I just found in the garden. Isn't it talented? Fil filled it up with uh, plaster and did all that. All right. You see? All right. Isn't that easy? Well, you're out of time for the dark. Okay, no, I'm not. No, hang on, hang on. I want one quick tip. One quick tip. One quick... Oh, look, look, that's still got you one left. I can't use that. Now, see, do this. Do this. Yeah. This is things you can do out of old nylon stockings. Yeah. Do that. And when you're tying up your tomatoes, that's fantastic for tying up your tomatoes because it doesn't damage the bush. Or your chrysanthemums, or whatever else you like. I've got to go. What Goodbye. A man. What a man. Now, I, I've got to say, I really... Amazing just, seeing all that again. It, it is, and what, what I loved about it is um, seeing how crafty you were. But I've known that about you. I've just... When we were working together on, on various shows, and I'm always seeing you creating sets, and that you seem to love... I mean, I don't know how many people know how much you do behind the scenes and making sets and painting backdrops and all that and making costumes. You can tell you really enjoy that side of it as well. I've always made stuff, I suppose. I... Out of necessity or joy, well, bit of both? Yeah, pro well, you know, that I suppose once a performer, always a performer, and you'll mm. find one way of making it happen, whatever the performance is. But I, I, sp I made a lot of you know, junky things like the... Oh, I've still got those, um, the containers to put plants in made out of stockings. They've lasted years, <laughs> years and years. Mm. They were a worthwhile project. Somebody put me onto them and I thought, oh, well, I'll show that one. The other, the making the bowls, there were dozens of those things. And I love doing the morning show with Jan because, and sometimes with Ann Wills on mm. Channel 10, because um, it, it just kept your brain operating and it just kept you you know, in the public eye, I suppose. Mm, so and, and employed. Work would come and employed, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I actually got paid for yeah. it. Now, of course, that was daytime. But yes. uh, we've, we've, you know, we know you get up to mischief at night time. Oh, really? Apparently, yeah, apparently you do, according to this footage. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, yeah, so let's have a look. Oh, this is a bull and bush. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. This is why I grew a moustache, because I looked a bit too young. Um, oh, this would have been probably six or eight years into, for 10 years we worked at the Bull and Bush with Wally Carr, Marie Fidock, Roger O'Loughlin, uh, Barbara Thompson. Um, well, that was the original cast, then Sue Way came in. Oh, when the Bull and Bush closed down, we did a show with Matthew Byrne and, and a group of people called Rock and Roll Reunion. Mm, I remember that one. And I got to play a lot of characters in that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> uh, I think his, his name was um, Des the Bikey. You've probably lost count of the amount of characters he played. I mean, <laughs> probably. <laughs> my, oh, oh, one of my favourite characters in the show was Billy Ballroom. This is, that's Billy Ballroom. Goodness. Yeah, quite the pose. Yes. Look at that stance. I was very naughty with this character. That's not like you, Malcolm. No. <laughs> Looked like a bit of fun. <laughs> I mean, theatre restaurant was pretty big. Well, yeah, the Bull and Bush ran for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we were guaranteed work at night for 10 years. Yeah. And then I took it over. I took it over then to do the Rock and Roll Reunion show. Mm -hmm. And that closed it down. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it was the end of that era. Yeah, yeah. But I was lucky because working at the Old Kings originally, uh, I got to work with all these old pros who'd come out of vaudeville and... So the, the understanding of, of timing of comedy and stuff was, mm. you know, you just learnt it by osmosis, I guess. Well, and then you resurged it and I got to be involved in it. Yes. Yes, and I think we've got, uh, we might even have some footage, bit of self-indulgent footage. Oh, um, <laughs> so let's with you. Look. Well, I think that might appear in the mix there. I think Blake uh, Oh, this, this is actually in the original uh, old Yeah, this is the original one, yep. Yeah, in the city. Um, it's not part of a show. Oh, God, I remember this. We shot this, uh, it was a rainy day and we had to shoot some film for Humphrey, yeah. Yeah, I was surprised Humphrey was And, there. and we just yeah. made up yeah. some sort of story. Um, 
about <laughs> Humphrey going to see a show in the theatre and that's what it was because they were costumes. That's Penny Ann Smith she was then. Um, oh, but this is, I this know, is I, the one you're I, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> okay. I observed the Well, I was the villain. I can't remember what villain. his name yeah. was, but I was the villain. I must speak to no oh, i never first. forget my name. Yeah, oh, I know what your name was. <laughs> ah, tis the girl. Um, and uh, yes, this was old sort of music hall villain the stuff. The shows were a funny mix girl, of a melodrama punctuated by production numbers that had nothing to do with the melodrama. But it was an absolute blast. And I remember working with the likes of Gordon, Gordon Paul, Paul um, Dee Dee James, yes. you know, yeah. it's just, I, I and Phil. Dee Dee a lot. Of course, Phil was in this production. Yes, that was. Oh, oh there you are, there Albert. Right. Look there, at you. Here comes Dick. <laughs> that was his name. It was. <laughs> well, that's no way to treat. Must Such a gentleman. Look. At I you. know. I think we were both sprightly. I think you were about that age when uh, some of those other videos we saw. <laughs> a real man will dare anything, Mister, rather than see a lady mistreated. You both! Ouch. I shall get even with you for this. Well, it didn't take much to get a good laugh from the audience, did it? <laughs> <laughs> it's such a shame that these places don't really exist anymore. I am a gentleman. Oh, there's Phil. This was the lovely Phil Skinner. Playing my wife. <laughs> Oh, Ruby, tis but a scheme. She just commanded the stage. Probably 30 years age difference between us yeah. at that time. Oh, well, she was obviously a cradle snatcher. Yeah. <laughs> why, did you, why did you desert me four years ago? Because, uh, It's uh, amazing you found all this stuff, because, Albert. Yeah. Because I was penniless. I well, I suppose one of the advantages of something like Facebook is that it's a platform that you can put things on that, you know, can save it. Yeah. And I, I know some people have sent me footage of things that I've done 20 years ago and went, how did you find that? Amazing. Yeah. Mm. Oh, one well, of those numbers. And, yes. uh, yeah. Oh, we should just watch this because the girls are lovely. Most beautiful girls in the world How I love them and adore them I live for them The most beautiful girls in the world Oh, now this was my favourite bit. There's no way I was going to let this one go. <laughs> the fairy. I, I learnt to work on point for a comedy number. Uh, that's what impressed me most, I think, was still being able to do point. And look alright in the tutu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the things we did. Uh, I remember the audience were in absolute hysterics. We were sideways, just listening to them roar. Five years I foiled the Demon King. That's incredible. But the girls do it all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I fear that Fairy Snowdrop isn't wanted now. Not so bloody and lucky for you, we brought the tutu and the point shoes, so you oh, can give us a rendition. <laughs> oh, fantastic, I can't wait. Well, Malcolm, before we look at some more footage, uh, some of your guests have actually recorded some messages for you. My name's Michael Coxon, and I'm the Mayor of the City of West Torrance. It gives me great pleasure to not only acknowledge, but commend Malcolm Haslip on his 500th 500th episode of our time. Congratulations, Malcolm. Great achievement. I'm Trevor Garrard, the Publicity and Education Officer of the Orchid Club of South Australia, and I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Malcolm on his 500th episode of Our Time. Congratulations, Malcolm. That's a marvellous milestone. I don't even think David Letterman and all those big Tonight Show hosts in America made 500 episodes. I could be wrong. But anyway, stay watching because I nearly said listening. Stay watching because it's going to be quite an event. 
You enjoyed watching that? I think my toes are still hurting. <laughs> I don't know how girls do it. Yeah, no, it's very impressive. Very <laughs> impressive. Um, another thing that reminded me of is um, I also got to perform in some of your pantomimes. And that yes. was my, my... Oh, yes, you were Father Bear. Father Bear. We had to, I had right. to juggle in a bear suit. You did. And it was an uh, absolute ride. I love I loved the pantomimes. You did so many of them. and uh, All through the 90s, actually. Yeah, yeah. I wrote... Oh, I don't know how many... I don't know how many I've written, about 20 of them, I suppose, because mm. we're doing three a year yeah. in those They were really years. popular. They yeah. were very popular. They probably yeah. still would be. <laughs> um, yeah, we, well, we did, yeah, we did Cinderella mm. not that long ago, and mm. that was very well received yeah. again. Yeah. With this character, Cyril the Servant. Ah, one of my favourite characters, Cyril, is. Oh, oh, oh that was, um, oh, that was... Wow. That was Grandma Talk a Lot in Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, okay. uh, Long John Silver character. I was a wizard in something. Oh yeah. Goodness. Ah, oh, I'm his Mrs. Talk a Lot. Oh. <laughs> Do you know this is this is the first appearance of Mrs. Talk a Lot as a pantomime dame character that I did. Mm. I'd never done a, a panto dame before. And I'd never actually seen a panto dame, and I've no idea how I knew how to do it. But um, yeah, that was um, in, that was in the first production we ever did of a panto Jack and the Bean store. She made a lot of appearances. There's a lot of Mrs. Talk a lot. <laughs> well, I think she appeared in our three bears. She sort of finds yes. a way in. An I, no, uh, it was a family of talk a lots. Family of talk a lots, yeah. right. That's why you had grandma before. That's why there were different ones, yeah. yeah. Any excuse to get the dancing shoes on. <laughs> oh, this is the Mrs. Talk a lot in Aladdin. Uh, her name is Florence of Arabia. Oh, very good. That's what she <laughs> called herself, Florence of Arabia. Florence talk a lot. Was that an audience member you brought up? <laughs> oh, 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 she always used to get up um, people from the audience, usually a bloke, but uh, in this particular show it was a male and a female, and teach them how to do a belly, a belly dance, as you do, of course. <laughs> oh, this is another Mrs. Talk a lot. I think this is Jessica Talk a lot. She, uh, this is Treasure Island. She'd been bound up and put in the in the dungeon mm. of the ship. Great set. Good perspective. I have an idea. And Mr. Smollett, I say, Mr. Smollett, old love. A set which you no doubt painted. Yeah. <laughs> you, I'll um, I'll make it worth your while. I'll um, I'll share with you some of my lovely recipes. Oh, I'd like to, Mrs. T. You must have a great wig collection. Dear, well, we wouldn't want that. That would be very messy, wouldn't it? Oh dear, oh dear, what on earth am I going to do? What I really need is some help from a friend. I need some help from a friend. I need some help from a friend. A friend who stands by me right to the end. I need some help from a friend. Do you miss doing the pantos? Yes, very much. Mm. It looks very friendly. Hello, Mr. Man with your arms crossed. <laughs> yes, you, dear. Could you give me a hand for a minute, could you, dear? Oh. Again, it's that live interaction, isn't it? It is, you yeah. Know? And um, getting someone up from the audience, particularly like a bloke like this, made it all much more real. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? Don't they look nice? Bruce, I say, could you untie me there, dear? I'm all tied up. There's a bit of a bow or something there, I think. Is that it? Oh, oh Bruce, I'm free! Free at last, Bruce! <laughs> waste anything I believe uh, this was a panto I wrote um, not the traditional one but it was really um, it was really a show written for as a TV pilot it never went past the stage but it was a it was really a terrific little show give them away or throw them with the junk and the trash out the door but I prefer not to waste anything that I have cause you see Someone may want them 
when they're no longer... Almost see the Humphrey set inspiration there. <laughs> And this is one of my favourite characters, Cyril the Servant, the old man in, in Cinderella and he's been in a lot of other shows as well. That's Anthony O'Donoghue who worked on his Humphrey. Yeah. And this is just one of my favourite little soft shoe routines, or a little song I wrote. Without you what would I be? Life would not be easy. You make me so happy. A happy chappy, that's me. Uh, where would he be without? 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 The prince has now made his match. Cinderella's a cat. Oh, but those sisters will have to behave. <laughs> now Cinder's no longer their slave. Well, you could tell you were having a great time with the Pantos there, Malcolm. Oh, yes, yeah. they were. They were lovely times. I can't believe you got all this yeah, together. Yeah. Oh, there's more to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a longer, longer I episode. Think is, uh, yes, so I think this is a longer than <laughs> yeah. half hour our, our time. Now, of course, you you know it's clear that you've uh, enjoyed entertaining you know South Australian audiences, Australian audiences. Mm. But then the next bit of footage, footage is, uh, I believe, it's overseas. So you obviously went uh, abroad to uh, entertain... Uh, oh, was it Singapore? I think it might be. Let's have okay. a look. Yeah, we worked in Singapore quite a lot. This one? Yeah. Oh, oh so that's a, a very small ice floor and the show is Aladdin in a shopping mall and I'm the Zierka Dadla Dadla Do, uh, who's the villain in Aladdin, in my version of Aladdin anyway. Um, these shows are put on by Richard Laidlaw for International Spectaculars and we used to make the ice and then we'd have to break it up and move to another shopping centre. Oh, this was a character I actually created for shows in Singapore, uh, Ralph the Elf. I think he was Ralph then, but he's become many other names. Oh, and also in Singapore, we did... Um, we did I've, no idea why we did these shows at Christmas time because they had nothing to do with Christmas. Um, clearly, I'm singing "Love Is in the Air." They thought I was a famous star from Australia, so I let them believe it. Why not? Anyone ask for your autograph? Yes, <laughs> they did foolishly. It's probably the girls. <laughs> but we've got more. You've done. You've obviously done some more ice, ice skating and performances. Oh, well, yeah, I have. But I fell into ice skating yeah. absolutely by coincidence. I was asked to direct an ice show at the Adelaide Ice Arena, and um, so I did. Have you got that too? Well, let's have a look at this. Oh, okay. Good old Humphrey again. How'd you get yeah, Humphrey yeah, on well, ice? Yeah, well, well, <laughs> I didn't skate, and they said to me. You know, you and Humphrey Bear are the most popular two children's characters in Adelaide. Uh, why don't you go into the show yourself? So you can see we had a sort of a folly show there. Yeah. I think there were ten girls and five boys. So in you the had show. to learn how to skate. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, back on point again. Yeah, tip and toe. <laughs> oh, that came in handy. And it was lovely to. We taught Humphrey to skate as well. And oh, oh wow. goodness! Yeah. And in the show we did this send up with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers but, but um, the costumes were tearaway costumes so <laughs> as the number progresses I slowly lost all my clothes. Yeah, I was going to ask you when I saw this. <laughs> as you can see that's falling apart at the back there. Humphrey also lost his dress um, Humphrey loved to dress up. Humphrey did like, look, even <laughs> earrings. That was Tony Balzan. Oh. Oh, look at Tony. Yes. Yeah, oh, and Humphrey had a hot water bag. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Then I got to work with the Moscow Circus on Ice. Oh, and, is that what And this, that yeah. toured um, the Eastern States, sadly never came to South Australia. That was probably one of the, one of the most amazing things because they were all Russian. And I had to learn to speak no, Russian. And the, this bit was recorded by Channel 9 because they did a doco, but that's what I looked like on the ice. Goodness. Yeah. I know this clip. 
Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any more of that. Then I got to work to be the on-ice compere of Torval and Dean's show that toured, that started here in Australia and started in New Zealand, actually, and toured the world. I didn't tour the world. I decided I didn't want to go because they went to Russia after this um, and I, didn't, I couldn't speak Russian, really. This was a show here in Adelaide on ice uh, for the Focus Video Show. I, think. I want to hold you so much at long last love. There you are, crooning away. <laughs> and I thank God I'm alive. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off you. Pardon the way that I stare. There's nothing else to compare. The sight of you leaves me weak. There are no words left to speak. And if you feel like I feel, please let me know that it's real. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my. What a horrible thought. Those girls must be the same age as me now. <laughs> oh, that was. Um, that was Sleeping Beauty on Ice with another serial character. That was in Singapore with the, one of the mums in the middle there of one of the girls. Okay, Malcolm, sit tight. We're going to uh, have a listen to some more messages from your wonderful guests. Hello, I'm Chantelle Parsons from Carry On Guides. I'm Brooke. I'm Matilda. And we would like to congratulate Malcolm on his 500th episode. Bravo, 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 bravissimo, bravo, bravo, very well done. Congratulations, Malcolm. I'm so proud of you. 500 episodes, and I was on one of the very first ones, when I think it was in black and white, and we drank water. Now you've got vodka. Cheers, doll. Two. I'm Charlie. Hey, I'm William. I'm Bailey. And we're the men, men who, who dance. dance. And, and we'd like to... Congratulate Malcolm, Malcolm on his 500th episode. Mm -hmm. so, congrats. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm Helen Parry, and this is Graham, my husband. Hi, we just want to congratulate Malcolm on his 500 episodes. Yes. Well done. Excellent show. We enjoy it. We've been guests on it. Congratulations, Malcolm. Well, I feel like we've only just scratched the surface, Malcolm, but I hope you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane. I can't believe you did that. Actually, I can't believe that you, Blake, and the crew yeah. here did that. That's yeah. amazing. Thank yeah. you. Well, I know, Thank Ma you. Well, Malcolm, you're not someone who likes to talk about yourself. I know you, and I've known you for a little while now, you like to help oh, other people. True. And that seems to be oh. what drives you a lot, being behind all those people, whether they're young or old, uh, doesn't matter who it is. You love being behind people and pushing them forward. So um, I know that's what everyone appreciates. Oh, and well, especially me, you got me into the industry Thank and you. I'm still here because of that driving force. And, um, and so it is nice to reflect on you for once. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah. it's just living a life really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which I've thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah, you can tell. So, so <laughs> I'm really delighted that you did that. Thank you. Yeah. And I can't believe we've made 500 episodes of this program. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's certainly a... Well, you're a legend, and uh, so is our time. Is that a legend? <laughs> a legend, that's it. So uh, I guess the, the only thing to do now is to thank you for being uh, part well, of this show. Thank you for the airtime, Albert. <laughs> no worries, you're welcome. And uh, look forward to well, chatting to you again. Thank you, Albert. Thank yeah. you to you particularly, the people mm. that have continued to watch the program yeah. for now when almost 13 years since the program started. Yeah. So it's a pretty amazing, mm. um, it's an amazing mm. time for the crews out here for community television, for what you've been through, yep. to still be on air and being able to do this. I love it. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you. And thank you. Do you want to say goodbye? <laughs> well, do I get to say goodbye? You can. Well, thank you for joining us on our time and we'll uh, see you next time. So keep yourself nice till then. Bye. Bye.